In the orientation series, we talked about how artwork like a logo, a poster, or other designs can get messy with tons of overlapping objects. You learned how Illustrator makes it easy for you to select, group, and align your artwork so you can work smarter and focus on the design. But what happens when you have something a little more complicated? That's where layers come in. Layers make selecting, working with, and organizing your artwork much easier. Now, most of us may not need to use layers when we start in Illustrator because, frankly, the artwork you create may not be that complicated. Some of us might not even have known that layers existed. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use layers to get complete control over organizing, selecting, and moving content. But before you jump into the tutorial and try this yourself, let's explore what layers are and find out how they can be so useful. Layers live in the Layers panel. Every document starts with a single layer, and everything you make is on that layer. If you look in the Layers panel, you might just see the layer there. But when you expand the layer, you can see everything in the document now listed. Everything is named in the panel. For example, you can tell this is a group because it would say group. This is a rectangle, and so on. It's all stacked from top to bottom. Looking in the Layers panel, in this case, is like looking at the poster tilted. You can see how everything is layered. In the orientation series, we covered how to arrange and group content in your project using menu commands. What we didn't show you is that these actions are reflected in the Layers panel. For example, if I hide this artwork, I can see that reflected in the Layers panel. Notice there's no eye icon. That means it's hidden. Now suppose we want to show it again. You can use the menu commands or you can just use the Layers panel. Click where the eye icon was and the artwork is back. If you need to select certain content but still need to see everything, in the Layers panel, you can temporarily lock whatever you're not working on so you don't accidentally move it, like these background shapes. Now what happens if you need to select a bunch of the same objects often? like these letters. You could group all the letters together, but that would make it harder to select and edit each. You can make a brand new layer like this, maybe to put all the letters on, and give it a name like text, so you can keep track of everything. For each new layer you make, naming them something that makes sense to you is a best practice. If you already have design content in your document, like those letters, you can drag content from one layer to another in the panel, so you can put it on that new layer. That way you can easily hide, block, and select the whole layer and everything on it. To finish up, I'll make a new layer, rename it Background, and put the background shapes on it. Now notice how the content is not in the right order out in the design. The hand illustrations are underneath everything else when they should be on top. The order of the layers in the Layers panel determines the ordering of content in the document. So we drag them into an ordering that makes sense in the Layers panel. First, you can collapse all the layers to make them easier to move. Then we drag to order them like this. Okay, so what did you learn? All content lives on a layer. Layers live in the Layers panel, and they can give you complete control over organizing, selecting, and arranging content. Naming layers is a best practice. That makes it easier to find things later. Now it's your turn. Start this tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions to practice taking organization and selections to the next level with layers.